Oh, I have to go to the train tunnel first. Ah. Damn! It's not like Charles 3 where no clips are available. Well, I'm not surprised about that one, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I find it okay, but it's just like... Like, as a film, but as a Turtles movie, yeah, it's pretty weak. Uh, I was about to say that's like expecting clips of Spider-Man 3 to show up on the internet. Then again, of course they would. Well, in the clips of Spider-Man 3, if, if, I, if I were to guess, emo Peter. Probably. <laughs> oh. Dead dance sequence, right? Oh. <laughs> I've only seen the ending battle of that movie, but every other time I've heard people talk about that movie or I've seen people talk about that movie... That's I've usually the one they go with, right? Yep. They always show emo Peter. I'm just like, oh, God. <laughs> it looks so bad. But there's a lot of good things in it, too. Like, they, yeah. they gloss over. But that's the problem. <laughs> the good things are glossed over! Uh, that's it! All the bad stuff is once on the forefront! Yeah, because... Or the good stuff meshes so much in a bad way that... Honestly, I will defend the third Spider-Man Spider film from Sam Raimi as such. Yeah. It's more... It's more understandable as to why it turned out that way when you look at it from a behind-the-scenes perspective. Yes. Friggin' Sony. Yep. Sony. They don't know how to do movies. They? <laughs> Basically. And they almost ruined the first one, too. You know what? Maybe they should, maybe they should try to get a deal with Tyler Perry. Maybe we'd see an end of those movies, too. I don't know whether to be pissed or to embrace your genius right now. <laughs> oh, come on. One of the recent weekends, Boo 2 Medea Halloween was the biggest movie over the weekend. No, but, like, I don't know whether to, uh, we'll scowl you because of the idea <laughs> or congratulate you if that actually happens and actually puts an end to it. Oh, that would be amazing. Like, yo, Tyler Perry looks like a shit. Let's help him make his movies. Then again, I don't know if I want to say they'll either make them better or, yeah, something... It, create something horrible about it that makes it finally go away. <laughs> hmm. Oh. Again, I I want the fence about this. I only knew about that freaking Medea movie because I went to see freaking the Hitman's Bodyguard and freaking that was one of the commercials. Like, I saw it looked like a thing for a horror movie. As soon as they showed freaking Medea in the car, I was like, oh, God, no. And literally, guys, a lot of people cheered. No, but I heard some people talking about it in the movie theater, and I was like, oh boy. Also, uh, want to see can, this you, crap. can you do me a favor and hop back in so you can take care of these blotlings? Or the uh, beetleworks? Oh, okay. Distraction time! Or you can just blow them up. You know, particularly the saw one. Yeah. Because he's an asshole. Got him. Yep. And now with a gun. Might as well. Just right there. Thank you. Yeah, I guess I should fly you over because who knows how. Well, you could have also had AI Oswald do it, but eh. I don't know. I, I don't I don't usually have the patience. To He's talk at about least Oswald. competent when I tell him to. Yeah, sometimes. Hence the, <laughs> hence the circle button. Yeah. Well, then again, I guess when you because the single player, the circle button here, is like, hey Oswald, get your ass over here. Uh yeah. It's my summon button. Yeah. I guess that I guess that does stop him from wandering on his own. Now that I think about it. Basically, it's like, hey, asshole, get over here! I want you here for something. I'm hoping that's what it is, and it's not. He goes a different route to try to get to you, and doesn't know where the hell he's going. Oh, that's happened before. Yeah. It was on Utopia, wasn't it? Um. I don't remember actually, because I know I I've, I've had that happen in the Wii version. Um, hmm. But I don't remember where it happened exactly, where it's like, I call for him, and he did not show up anywhere. Until, like, I went back and, like, actually went next to him, and pressed the circle one so he'd follow exactly where I was going. Yeah. But I don't remember where exactly that was. Ah, uh, fucking <laughs> But then again, you know, I didn't really, um, in the Wii version, I didn't go through that much of it. You only, like, like, got through, like, what, episode one, pretty much? I went through the first two episodes. Okay. By the time I was getting to the third episode, that's when the PS3 version copy I ordered for Amazon came in. So I was like, eh, fuck this. 
Yeah, there you go. But I, but also it didn't help that I found out that's like, oh, uh, like it also didn't help like while I was playing the Wii version, which why I ordered the PS3 version to begin with because the challenges, but uh, like which are the quote unquote achievement are tied to the file. Are tied to the file. Which, which you only have one. Which thankfully I only have one, and once I get it as a trophy here on the system, you know, on my profile. Right. It's still there, despite, you know, not actually getting it in the playthrough. Right. However, the Wii version, they completely erased that. Uh, and it, And uh, even if you start a new game. Yeah. So it's completely impossible in the Wii version to get all the challenges in a single file. Hmm. God damn it. Or a single profile in this case. Right. Because, well, there, that's the reason why multiple files exist. Yeah. God damn it. Oh, who knows? We might be locked out of shit in this one. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> God damn it. This is apparently close. Make the splat spatter seems to have gone non-existent entirely. Despite us actually picking up the item. Yeah. We pick up the items. We activate Clarabelle's side of the quest, too. Which is even more baffling. Yeah. <sighs> Reminds me why I stopped playing Breath of the Wild when I learned I couldn't do 100% of the side quests. Well, you can. It's just, um... No, I locked myself out of a couple of them. Really? Yeah. You know how in Breath of the Wild you have quests to activate shrines? Yeah. I ignored some of those and found the shrine anyway. Well then! So I couldn't do the I couldn't activate the quest to find the shrine, because I already found the shrine. Lovely. Yeah. That yeah, must have been a bitch. I really haven't gone back to that game since I beat uh Calamity Ganon. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's still a dumb name. Yeah. Like I said, it people really love the Teletown Wild. Oh, like, oh, I'm sorry, he's not a he's not a Wild West outlaw. I mean seriously. Yeah. That's the kind of name you give. To someone uh, in a Wild West a parody. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. The exploration was fun. I really had fun going through the game. But well, now I think it reminds me of one of uh, Yahtzee's reviews. You know, zero punctuation. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. As soon as you said Yahtzee, like uh, in yeah. terms of a person, like it's like I know exactly who yeah. you're talking about. He mentioned telling his Metroid: Samus Returns review. He said he loved it when he played it, but he didn't really think about it much anymore. But kind of felt the same way about Breath of the Wild. He had fun playing it, didn't remember hating it, but well, it didn't really stick with him that much afterwards. I mean, there are going to be games like that where it's like you have fun your one run through, but it's like you yeah. don't really intend to go back to it anytime soon. That's why I haven't bought the DLC. Don't really feel like going through a hard mode tour, and I don't really care about the trials thing. Yeah, so. but like, again, like, there are going to be stuff like that where it's like, yeah, it's fun once. Yeah. But it's like it's probably gonna be a slog to get through a, another a, another playthrough. Yeah, I spent like close to a hundred hours. So, I mean, cause I mean no. that's usually the way I feel about most traditional RPGs. It's like if I know I'm gonna play through it again, that is something I'm putting everything else aside. Yeah. Cause I know my dedication is going towards that game. Well, it was also my only Switch game at the time, so it was easy for me to play that. Well. It was that Super Bomb Ran R, but, well, one game's an hour long, the other game's a hundred hours long. Yeah, but, it, it, again, it's like, you know, like, that's the way I feel about most, uh, uh, our, our traditional RPGs, like, yeah. like the Final Fantasy series. Like, where I know they're good in quality, but it's like one of those things, it's like, that's something I don't typically do yeah. in downtime kind of thing. Yeah. Fair enough. That's it's one of those things, it's like, I want to put aside time to actually work on it. I guess that's probably one of the reasons I haven't gone back to finish Chrono Trigger or go back to actually officially starting Final Fantasy VI. Mm -hmm. Slash three, whatever. <laughs> it's six. Yeah. Let's not beat around the bush. Yeah. On my way. I mean, you can make the joke when you have the Super Nintendo version, but, yeah. but only in the intro. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing before. Yeah, I, I wanted to give that game a chance, but I just didn't feel like I had the time to do it. And the Moogle thing kind of made me feel eh about it. it it's one of those games where it's like... It, it takes a while to get started, I it, guess. It's a lot of commitment. Like, 
the story got me a little hooked, and then I was going to the game. Oh, the beginning of the game, story-wise, is probably the most phenomenal of the 2D uh, yeah. uh, uh, side of uh, Final Fantasy. I say I did like the story because it's like you already are at the end of the world. Like fuck. But then I was spend that. And then I had to do that Moogle Cave bullshit. And I was like, and if people figure like, oh, spoilers, like it's the first five minutes of the game. Oh yeah, they pretty much all, all load the story at you right away. It's like Kafka already rules the world. What the fuck are you gonna do? Yeah. I just remember that fucking Moogle, Moogle Cave thing. It was like a tutorial. I was like, Jesus Christ, I don't feel like I'm learning anything. And honestly... And they just throw me out there. I was just like... Uh... I might want to play something as, as else. Much as, I love, <laughs> I, as, as much as I love Final Fantasy IX of the 3D side of things, and how I will always say it's much better than 7 uh, Fanboy Rage Commence... Yeah, um, a lot of people said that at least the Final but Fantasy... But I, I will like admit, that. the one thing I find the weakest element... Uh, Final Fantasy IX, if I really had to boil it down to just one, the main villain. Ah. That's literally the weakest element. Like, the story, the plot, everything was really good, but the villain... The main it, villain. He really wasn't. <laughs> nope. Huh. Neat. Then again, I don't really hear about Especially the, with the latter portion of the game, and that's all I'm going to say. Then again, I always hear the top villains of freaking Final Fantasy Because, game, well, let's just say... You're going to be thinking of a very specific pop culture-esque thing. Oh. That's very uh, popular in pop culture. That's very iconic in pop culture osmosis that everyone knows where the hell it's going kind of thing. Ah. It's that type of ordeal. Oh, boy. And that's all I'm going to say. Oh, man. Well, speaking of which, we haven't found any and stuff. Guess what? Wrath. Well, since we're doing this backtracking crap anyway, I may as well talk about my gaming endeavors lately. Oh, do tell. I played uh, Mario Rabbids Battle Kingdom. Oh, how was that? It was actually pretty good. So I keep hearing, actually. Yeah, it was... It's definitely simpler than I expected, but... Oh, it, get, it kind of gets hard a little bit. I had a lot of fun. Mm. And the final boss, Mega Mega Bowser, was pretty epic. Yeah, it's all one word, by the way. That's why I said it like that. Mega Mega uh, Bowser. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, uh, you might want to get you want to get that snee you might want to get your allergies checked out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just saw the name of the boss. I was just like, oh Jesus. The boss fights were epic, though. Those are probably the hardest part of the game for me because of. Well, just actually, little... hang on a sec. Okay. I kind of wonder something. Nope. Oh God damn it! All right, coming back. <laughs> Because I was going to say, if I could uh, shortcut ourselves for this, but... No, they actually were smart about that programming. Oh, of course. And one thing! <laughs> they can't program Oswald right, but they can do that. And it's like, you came from here, you're going to reappear, reappear, reappear there, asshole. They can't freaking control where Oswald stands, but they can do that. God damn it. <laughs> Wait, I will say, freaking, with Mario's Rabbids, the boss battles are pretty hard. It's the way the game works, like... You get, like, money and shit to, like, buy better guns and all that shit. In order to get more money, you gotta do well enough in the battles as well. Huh. The boss conditions make it kind of hard. You notice the gunner did something, right? He moved that down? No. He paid that thing back in. Oh, I made it back up. Oh, God. Well, I thinned it out, so. Yeah. I was gonna say, I thought I walked through it for a second and I realized you thinned it. Yep. Okay, we just go this way. All right. Yeah, because I'm trying to get a high enough ground so I can actually get up here. Right. The thing... Because remember, priority, bitch. Yeah. The thing that made Marvel's Rabbids hard, like, getting the perfect conditions for the fight, like, in order to get the best conditions to get the most money out of all the fights, mm -hmm. you had to both keep all three of the people alive that you used in the battle. Yeah. And complete in a certain number of turns. Mm -hmm. Some of them were brutal. Like, the I final heard. The final boss, like, the first boss you had to beat in, like, 12 turns or 10 turns. And the second boss is the other one. The last boss you had beaten seven. And each boss has three phases. So, well, I mean, the final boss, so of course, it's got to be the most challenging. Yeah, you got to be fast, too. Well, that's what I'm saying. If there's a challenge for a final boss, of course, it's got to be the most challenging of yeah. them. Yeah. And, well... Because it would make no sense where it's, like... They randomly have the hardest challenge in the middle of a game for some random fight, and it's just like, final boss is like, oh, just do this. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, I know some games do that, and I've experienced a couple of them myself, but it's like, 
Yeah. That it makes more sense. The to speed have, made it harder though. Probably. No, but I'm saying for yeah. a speed challenge to make it the most difficult with the final boss, it makes the most sense to have yeah. that one being the most difficult. Yeah. I mean, you basically gotta learn. There are a lot of little guys that get in the way. Ignore them or hit them with the boss. Freaking. Oh. Huh. Well, it looks like they didn't do all of it right. <laughs> well, that works. <laughs> anyway, continue. God damn it. But, uh. Yeah, the game actually has some challenge. Like, I don't think I actually troubled the game till like, more than halfway through. I think the first fight I didn't get the perfect condition on was the, uh, World 3 boss. Mm. Which, uh. I can just tell you a couple details about it. Well, he's a phantom, so you kind of shoot through him, and, uh, well. He's into singing. Ah! Guess, you guess what kind of character they're going for there. Ah, uh, hmm, and if I remember who is supposed to be like, composer for that, I can already tell the inspiration for that. Yeah. Oh, don't worry, it's not foul, but, yeah. No, but, in terms of having a singing character. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you, you're referring to Congress Bad Furry, of course. Yep. Yep, it's that guy, so. Yep, Grant Kirk Kirko. Yeah, he, he writes some good music. Which, apparently, in the song for that one, he didn't know where it was going, so. Yeah. Yeah, apparently, the weird thing is, like, apparently he was a little intimidated once he learned it was a Mario game, too. Yeah, apparently. Like, he, like, heard, like, oh, okay, it's gonna be a Rabbids game, alright, I can duck for this. And then the team showed him a demo, he's like, wait, what is this? This is the game. Wait, what? <laughs> this is a Mario game? Oh, God! Wait. I mean, I, I can understand, especially with someone who grew up, but for him, like, for someone who grew up, like, with, um... He's like Koji that, Kondo's that like Koji Kondo's melody is I mean Oh yeah, Koji Kondo's That is a big name to live up to in the video game industry. Oh yeah, he's a musical genius. The way he writes, at least I heard like, like I mean hell, the original Mario theme and Zelda theme, like you oh, have yeah. him to pick. Oh my god, yeah, they're they still stand the test of time today. Exactly, and that's saying a hell of a lot, especially after thirty years. Yeah. He's a legend. I heard the way at least from 3D World, the way he writes music now, it's like he tries to come up with melodies he thinks in his head. What can I listen to for three hours without getting tired of it? Well, well, we already named two of them. Yeah, like, that's a good philosophy to go on. If you can listen to one piece of music loop for hours and not get sick of it, that is a good philosophy to go on. Yeah, it's like, like what can be enjoyable anytime this is playing? Yeah. Like, that takes effort. It does. And that's why he's a legend. Exactly. That's why Kirkhope is intimidated. He's like, to try to make my music quality try to match up with kind of the stuff he's done. Oh man, you are asking a big. You're asking for a tall order there. Right? Kirkhope's not bad though. I mean, he's not bad, but if, if you're going to be compared to someone like that, it's well, like, that's yeah. a tall order to fill. Yeah. And so I can understand him being intimidated by that. Yeah. Like Koji Kano's like even above the levels of like freaking RPG musicians and like. The music they come up with, people go in the epic feel and all that shit. Koji Kondo feels like at that level, too. Yeah. Which I learned something. Hmm? I don't know, if you've probably heard the name Yoko Shimomura, I'm guessing. Sounds about, well, uh, sounds familiar. He's been, he's been involved in music for three game series, I'm sure you're known, you know well. Hmm. Or at least two you know well. Uh, just drop the names and I'll tell you. One is Kingdom Hearts. Oh, of course. The up one another is Mario and Luigi. Hmm. He's been the solo composer for the entire series. Which I think he's just been a co-composer for Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, that sounds about right, because I know the uh, the main themes are actual J-pop songs uh, by, uh, what's her face? Yeah. Um, which, um, by the way, when we get to either Days or Two specifically... Okay. I'm going to have to ask you mute. to mute the, um, the in-game audio for when that song appears. Like the uh, title song for it. Of course. Because that one's grounds for copyright strikes. Understood. And the third one, apparently, is a co composer for um, Xenoblade. Hmm. Well, I'm not too versed in that one, but at least. Well, yeah. I, I, you were aware of it, at least. Oh. That's one like, of the appears I follow cannot shut up about that game. It's pretty good. I mean. Like, seriously, like. I mean, I know, I'm not questioning the game's quality, but it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, I hear about it so much, it's like, I don't want to ever experience it myself yeah. because I feel like it's going to diminish the experience. Yeah, understand. I will say this, though, the soundtrack for that game is incredible. Like, holy shit. 
Probably yeah. best RPG soundtrack I've ever heard. My God. Yeah. Uh, well, it's up for debate. Well, but... yeah. Because, again, music is very subjective. That it is. It's like one of the most subjective things you could ever have in history. That's true, with all the genres and sub-genres and speeds and styles. Yeah, plus, even, like, individual songs, like, you know, even if it's not, like, tied to a specific genre, like, there are some people who are gonna love it no matter what, other people are gonna hate it. Yeah. Like, because, I mean, let's put it this way. I mean, let's take a famous musician that we can all think of. Like, let's say, uh, Michael Jackson. Yes. For example. I mean, we know the quality of his songs are good. Yeah. But there are some people... But there are some people that probably just hate hate the music. Like I'm indifferent for one, but hate is not a word I use. Yeah, but it's like, it's like you can't deny... Oh, yeah. You know... There's impact, of course. There's impact. I mean, again, like, it's all subjective in terms of music. You know, there's some people who are going to disagree, and if they give me yeah. a legitimate reason why they think so, kudos. Yeah, that's the same way I feel about the Beatles. I'm indifferent towards them, too, because... I mean... Listening to them now, I'm like, eh, it doesn't sound that good, but then I'm like, well, this paved the way for a lot of musicians to build Exactly, on. especially so. during, given the time they were out. Oh, yeah. Especially with the Beatles case, it's like, I mean, same thing with the Stones. I mean, yeah, I know you outright hate the music, mostly because of Mick Jagger. Yeah. But... Again, like, you have to remember, during the time, it sounds phenomenal. I don't mind the monster that is Keith Richards, though. <laughs> <laughs> the undead bullshit? Yeah. He is what makes her sound... He's the only thing that makes her sound good to me. What you well, want. Oh, you want but either way, yeah. But again, it's, it's like one of those things, it's like the most subjective thing, individual by individual. Because I'm sure there's some things, yeah, we agree on a lot of things... But there's probably a few songs here and there that we don't really agree on too much. Yeah. It's like we might like their hits, or somebody might hate one of their hits. We both might happen to like some deep song somewhere in their music library. Like, oh! But I think me and you what both you agree uh, we don't like anything Justin Bieber related. Oh, good lord, no. <laughs> oh, no, baby's kind of growing on me. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it, you see what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. But it's like... Where it's like... Yeah, it's like, I mean, I personally, uh, what was it? Like, because I, I know there's one song you absolutely fucking hate that it's like, I find some guilty pleasure in. Hmm. Uh, what is it? It was, like, uh, Hungry Like the Wolf, I want to say. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, like, see, there's an example right there. I, I learned to hate that song because my dad hated it. He showed me why. I was like, uh-huh. Yeah. Like, the catchiness sounds too corny to me. But yeah, but the, see, the thing is with me, I try to separate the music from the artist who does it. Yes. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I also, Because, you know, I, I try to separate the personal life of the artist from the music they create. Then again, I'm also one of the few people that doesn't like Final Countdown. I feel like it's heavily overplayed. I got sick of it. I mean, yeah, <laughs> overplayed can damage someone's taste of music. Yeah. I mean, that's how I somewhat feel about Don't Stop Believing, but, I mean, I still think it's a good song. It's oh, just, yeah. I, it's not something I'm going to go out of my way to listen to anymore. And it, it tarnished you listening to some, trying to appreciate some bands lower, like... I mean, I... Admittedly, I do... I still enjoy Don't Stop Believing. Yeah. But I don't enjoy it as much because yeah. of the overhype. Yeah. I know when I told you one of my favorite bands, Metallica, you told me you were only... You weren't... You, like, respect them and didn't really care much for them because you heard Master of Puppets all the time in high school. It's more I, like I heard... It. I, I more, more so I heard them talk about it, like, religiously. Oh, as like the one Metallica song that everyone needs to listen to. Super fans could definitely be irritating. I mean... That is, I mean, I do like a couple other songs, like, uh, like one. One? Um, a lot of stuff. Uh, what was it? Inner Sandman. Like those two, I really. Oh, of course, like. yeah. Those are two of their biggest hits. Yeah, but it's like Master Puppets is the one that people will not shut the fuck up about. So it's known as a heavy metal masterpiece. <laughs> I get. I mean, I actually meant that, but I, I know, but I, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's one of those songs. It's like oh, I know, I know. <laughs> Oh god. But anyway, it's like one of those songs. It's like people will not shut the fuck up about it. It's like I'm less inclined to listen to it. I, I get I get why you hate it, but I get why people talk about it too. Because I'm in the same boat, but I'm not. Gonna... I mean, I still to this day at the time of this recording have not heard much of it. But it's like, one of the things is like, I don't feel inclined to go out of my way to listen to it now it, because of people not shutting the fuck up. If you're not really, I, I, if you're not a big heavy metal fan, you probably wouldn't really like it, although Cause there's each, a chance. Because I will but, say, even before high school, I still liked Enter Sandman and One from Metallica. Oh, like, of course. I will admit. Oh, yeah. But it's like, I didn't I didn't go out of my way to listen to a lot of their tracks because it's like, it's not something I was interested in. But it's like, 
you know, it's like Master Puppet's like the the one that people will not shut the fuck up about. So it's like, yeah, really, yeah. I don't want to listen to it. No, a, oh wait, wait, we can't buy it. God damn it. Not yet. Yeah. Yeah, I just give me a minute. 